Okay, right now we are working on getting the uh, PTO to match up to the motor. And basically what I'm doing is I welded a washer onto the PTO so it'd have a flat surface. And then I welded the gear that came off the motor to the washer. Uh, and basically I test fitted it, everything works, it spins straight. So the biggest thing here is making sure when you weld the pieces down, they're perfectly centered and perfectly level. And you can check that by putting it on the motor afterwards, um, hooking it up to make sure it doesn't go flying off, and uh, spinning to make sure it spins true. So yes, it's the world's ugliest weld job, I agree to that. If you're coming to this channel, it's not for my welds. Let's be honest. Anyhow, um, this is all you gotta do. Now it's getting ready for paint, and what'll end up happening is after it slides over the shaft, the nut and the bolt will go back down through uh, below the splines here uh, to hold it on to ensure it stays on. All right, next step is to slide the uh, PTO over the shaft. Uh, and you can't see in there, but uh, drop your lock washer and your 12 millimeter lock nut in there and uh, basically torque it on. And then we're gonna test fit it right now. All right, just slid it on real quick and let's see how she does. Plug in the key. So this here is the uh, engine mount. Basically all I did was I took the 587 uh, engine mount, which I think might be the same as the 657 and the 720. I can't confirm that, uh, but they should be pretty similar. And all I did was took a uh, six by eight sheet of 16 gauge, which I wish it, wish it would have been a little thicker, but it wasn't, but 16 gauge steel, uh, welded along the seams with a tube to reinforce the bottom. Yes, same great welds, uh, and four holes to bring the bolts up through to mount the motor. And we're gonna go ahead and install that right now. All right, something I wanted to note. Uh, the original crankshaft actually, when it screwed in, screwed in right about there, uh, where this crankshaft is only screwing into right about, or the drive shaft is screwing into about down there. So we have a bit of a gap. Uh, and the problem with that is that your drive shaft coming from back will walk up and spin out of these threads and you're gonna be left stranded on the lake. We don't want that. Now, even though this thing does fill with lube or grease, I don't want a chance the fact that that could slip forward and leave me stranded in the lake just worrying about some grease. So I'm going to go ahead and install uh, the end of a bolt temporarily uh, until I can get a flat, basically, uh, piece of steel, a round piece of steel uh, that's smooth edged to put in there to stop it as kind of a barrier. Alright, the motor is officially installed and mounted. Now what we're going to do is we're going to shim out the motor mounts uh, to make sure that the motor is sitting perfectly square with the way the drive shaft should be in. And the easy way to kind of measure that, you can use a scope or whatever you want to use, and you measure the distance from the gap on the top of the motor to the gap that's on the bottom, and you want to equal that out. In my case, the top's got a bigger gap, that means I need to put uh, shims in the back of it. The shims we'll be using will be these right here, which are actual wave runner shims. All right, now I have it shimmed out the best it's probably gonna get with three larger shims in the rears to try to settle this thing. One thing I don't like about it though, and I don't know how well it's gonna hold up, is if you'll see that play, and that's actually where the shaft is that comes in that we mounted the uh, sprocket to or welded it to the PTO. Minus the weld being crap, of course, but it holds. Uh, I just don't know if that little bit of half-sided or two flat sides are really going to hold the torque so if it doesn't what will end up happening is this motor will have to be disconnected and we'll have to weld that shaft to this thing um, obviously you're not going to put too much money into it. it's to budget build but I'd like to see it like this but it's not going to hold like that without actually welding it so you'll see when you give it a little bit of gas you'll see it flex While that might be okay, again, I won't know until I get it on the water and test it. Okay, a little update. Uh, to start, I figured out why this voltage meter isn't reading correctly. Uh, it has a cutoff at 48 volts. Um, if you think the average battery, it's usually uh, fully charged. It's like 12.6, 12.7. That said, four of them in series usually brings around 52 volts. Uh, I was able to run the motor for a minute and it dropped to 48 and it actually showed. I did buy a replacement one. Uh, I don't know that I want to put that in there. I don't like the look of it. So I might just deal with what's there. Uh, that's issue one we have to resolve today. Uh, issue two, we have to put the safety switch, uh, breaker basically, circuit breaker, mount in here somewhere just in case water is to trip for whatever reason. We don't burn anything up. So we're going to do that. We're going to do some rewiring with some waterproof connectors. 
Uh, and then we're going to do a little bit more work on angling this motor and trying to get the right angle that we need. We also have to wire a bilge and figure out something with the old exhaust port to get it plugged up. So, uh, so basically we don't uh, have any water coming in the hole. And that's pretty much it. We'll keep you updated. Alright, quick update. So, uh, as we spoke last time, I uh, decided I was going to put in the circuit breaker, so we mounted it right here so it was convenient. It was also away from water. Uh, so basically that is being cut into your power wire, the positive side. So from the motor, it will go to what is our disc quick disconnect where our charge will connect to, to the breaker, from the breaker to the positive. Uh, that part's done. Uh, then you'll see what we've done is we have taken out the old battery tray right here. It wasn't necessary. Uh, we'll have to plug those little bit of holes that were there. We don't have to, but I probably will with silicone. Uh, and then I went ahead and mounted the bilge pump by making a uh, bracket, basically a Z bracket, you could call it, uh, to where it's sitting. The wiring on that runs from uh, basically the battery up to, again, our switch here and back down to our bilge pump, which you can probably hear it running there. Uh, pretty straightforward. I didn't uh, I didn't hook up the uh, the automatic bilge part just because I felt like we already have two automatic bilges that are constantly pulling anyhow. So when we're in movement, it's gonna know to pull them anyways. We're putting water; it's in there out anyways. So I'm not really worried about that. Uh, also went ahead and we uh, leveled out and shimmed the motor, so you'll see there won't be much vibration anymore. Um, pretty smooth now. Now, there's no flopping of the actual uh, PTO here in the back. Um, then we went ahead and we kind of cleaned up the wires the best I could, at least with all the crazy amounts of wiring that's in here. Um, so you can kind of see it's a little bit cleaner than it was, at least as clean as we can make it. Um, one last, actually two last things to do. We have to run the hose from the bilge, probably out the back up here somewhere so water won't escape back in. I also have to plug the exhaust hole here and do something with this hose here. I'll probably just cap it off. I think that's pretty much it. And then we're going to go water test it and see how she does. So uh, once I get those updates, we'll move then. Thanks.